Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first uh, design review meeting from the Chimney Chase Community Center. Uh, my name is Chris Frombaluti. Uh, I'm the chair of this uh, task force, which is called the Design Oversight Task Force. Uh, I'm also the ANC, I'm the vice chairman of the ANC. Uh, <clears throat> you read the handout that, that we left on the chair, there's some information about the community center, uh, some of the history of the design which you might find interesting, and also some rules about uh, questions. The first thing I want to do is I want to introduce uh, Francisco next to me, uh, to the Department of Parks and Recreation, and he's going to introduce uh, the folks on his side of the table who are going to be presenting today. Thank you. Um, thanks. thanks so much, Commissioner. I appreciate that. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for coming out tonight. We really do appreciate it. Um, first, I want to say thank you to the ANC for we're having the most elaborate uh, community meeting set up we've ever had at TPR meeting, I think in 11 years, so this is fantastic. Uh, we have actually microphones instead of like the megaphones, so we don't have to yell and stuff, so this is really nice. We, we appreciate that and, and uh, all the work you've put into this over the years. Uh, I heard that you've done I think, a, th a thousand survey responses before, and uh, we just want to say how much we appreciate that, um, because I know this means a lot to you as the NC and also the community. Uh, because as you can see, this, this building needs some, needs some love, and, and your ANC and your, your leaders in your community have gone and gone to bat for you. Um, and so we have a good project budget that we'll get into uh, to talk about the, the redesign and redevelopment of this facility. Uh, but as the Commissioner stated, I'm Brent Sisko. I am a landscape architect in our Capital Projects Division. Um, and we uh, do a lot of these types of meetings. We just finished up our, our ninth. Uh, community meeting for the Lafayette Rec Center project last week uh, here in this room. Uh, and we had it on the World's, uh, World Series Game 7 night, I think it was, so we were able to, to get done and, and get out by 8 o'clock magically. I don't know what happened. Um, but anyway, uh, with me tonight um, is uh, Jamie Johnson um, from DGS. She works for Kramer Consulting, who uh, is a project management firm uh, that works for DGS as a project manager. We're really happy they're on this project with us. Uh, Mark Backus uh, is the uh, going to be the project manager for this particular project, uh, and Daniel Blair um, from Bell Architects, uh, and David Bell from Bell Architects uh, with us tonight. We're super excited that Bell is with us. They have uh, worked with DPR on a number of projects, uh, particularly uh, even I think this is our third collaboration, maybe fourth. Um, uh, if anybody's been to the Kenilworth Recreation Center. Uh, in Ward 7 um, on Ord Street. That's a beautiful facility. Much like this one is, uh, was an adaptive reuse of an old facility that turned out absolutely beautiful. Um, we were working with David and his team on uh, the redesign and rebuild of uh, an annex to Shepherd Elementary School. Uh, it's re that's a, another great project. So again, we're happy to be here and happy to uh, be in front of you tonight. Thanks again for coming. I want the, uh, the task force members, if you guys have introduced yourselves, uh, Abe, start with you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abraham Clayman, and I'm ANC Commissioner for 34G, which represents Hawthorne and part of Barnaby Woods, and I'm a member of the Design Oversight Task Force. Nice to see you all. Hi, I'm Bill Oberdorfer. I'm the Executive Director at the Avalon Theater, and also live in the neighborhood, and uh, Design Task Force uh, interested here from an Avalon theater perspective. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Dan Bradfield. Uh, I'm Commissioner for ANC 3G06, which is the Chevy Chase, Chevy Chase Circle, the corridor, and over to Chevy Chase Park on the western portion of the district. I'm a private citizen on this task force. I've been a resident of DC since 1995 and um, a resident of this neighborhood since 1998 on the Vaughan Avenue. And I'm happy to serve you. Hello, everybody. I'm Jerry Malix, also a member of this design oversight task force. I'm also the ANC commissioner for 3G05, which is the side of Connecticut Avenue down to a Broad Branch, which includes this community center. Hello, 
Hello everybody, I'm Patrick Williams. I'm a citizen of Chevy Chase, I live in Hawthorne. I've uh, been living here since 2012. I'm not an ANC member, but I've been involved with this uh, ever since inception, maybe three, four years ago. And I serve on the Design Oversight Task Force. Uh, thanks everybody. Uh, basically the role of the Design Oversight Task Force is, is what its name implies. Uh, the idea is, is to facilitate community meetings at uh, regular intervals throughout the project so that we can uh, see how the design is coming and make sure that it meets the community's needs. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to turn this back over to Francisco. He's got a presentation, uh, the architects have a presentation. Uh, it could last uh, about 45 minutes or so, and uh, we ask that you hold your questions until after uh, the uh, lecture's over. I think you might have one point where you for some opinions. So, uh, but uh, we'll have uh, an hour or so at the end of this to uh, ask questions. Thank you so much. So we do. Um, we do have a, a presentation with a few slides. We'd like to go go through with you. Um, uh, David, are you going to be presenting the slides tonight? Okay. So David's going to present. I'll set up the, the projector for us. Um, we might have to we scooped you around a little bit, and I'll go over there to advance the slides. Um, uh, but yeah, as, as the commissioner said, if you could please hold your questions until the end. We have a lot of, we're just going to try to get through the, the, the uh, presentation as quickly as we can. I'm happy to go back and answer questions as needed. Connecticut Avenue on the diagonal. Um, McKinley on the south side of, of the 
sites. Uh, and so the west side of the site it, um, is a mixed use uh, zone, and on the uh, uh, east side or the right is a residential zone. Most of the, this building is in the uh, mixed use zone, but a part of it uh, ekes into the residential, and then the parking is, is first all in the residential zone. So if we look at some of our restrictions, and the, the residential is the most restrictive side, but not by a lot, but, uh, it would allow us, um, uh, including the library, and so we have to sort of work with both agencies and not take all of the available area, developable area, and then leave them um, with nothing. It, it needs to sort of be balanced. Um, it, and so right now, uh, our, we're at the max, we're pretty close to the max, we're maybe uh, 3,500 uh, square feet, 3,600 square feet below the allowable. Uh, and they count the allowable area above, above grade, so you can go down as deep as you want and have more square footage. Then that creates costly construction and it may not be the kind of space that they want to achieve. So the, uh, the library is, is over 50 years old, and we believe this building is right around 50 years old, maybe just a little under, a little, a little bit over. That's often the, the trigger point for designation for historic properties. Uh, where, where would this fall uh, in terms of its eligibility to where level? Uh, we don't know. Maybe association with uh, events, with people, and maybe um, architecture, and maybe uh, other other reasons, or it may not be eligible. That's not for us to decide, although we have a, a preservation or a uh, uh, architectural history consultant who's doing the research, putting together a report will be evaluated by the sort of preservation arms. So um, some of the, the, the things that uh, we think are important are, uh, is making sure that the property engages Connecticut Avenue. Right now it's a little bit hidden from, from the, the commercial corridor. There's a, a berm around the southwest corner. It seems to sort of cut it off and, and raise it up on a, on a podium. I think some of the community comments were to try to to resolve and improve that, and we agree with that. There's quite a bit of um, a natural, natural and, and, um, and planned landscaping um, between the two buildings, and it creates a nice space between the two buildings. We want to make sure that we don't lose the character of that space and enhance that kind of space, no matter what we do with the building. Um, and, and it has a certain amount of parking on site, uh, and obviously parking can be important for these kinds of facilities, so we want to make sure we don't lose parking, um, perhaps enhance the parking uh, as we do other things because we have other requirements including stormwater management uh, and we have some ideas on how to introduce solutions for that that actually enhance the landscape and deal with stormwater at the same time. Uh, and if we're going to be expanding the building, we need to be smart about how we do that because we are constrained not only by the square footage, but the amount of lot occupancy and the height. Um, so a lot of those trade-offs need to be factored into the whole plan. So when you look at the, uh, the structural system of the existing building, if we're going to be using the existing building, we need to make sure that we do something that makes sense for the building. So uh, in the initial uh, structural analysis, the, uh, the, the structure engineer said, basically this building is set up in containers or, or, or rectangles of structure. The, the central spine where the stairs are is one structural element. And a lot of up and down there, a lot of challenges making that work for us for accessibility and, and engaging uh, users and actually finding their way to the right places. And then on the west side is the space for it basically. This is a, one, one of the structural uh, elements and that's uh, a big box essentially. On the other side, you have the central quarter, and then you have two other rectangles there, and they, and they stack. Um, so, so the minute we start to introduce structural changes to any of these boxes, may trigger the need to, to do something significant with that box, but we may want to stay away from altering the other boxes. Uh, so we need to look at, at those sorts of things and try to make sure that we're not doing little bits here and there, and all of a sudden, uh, somebody says, well, why don't you just tear it down because what you're doing is just 
costing is not really taking advantage of retaining the building. We're still in the, in the mode of analyzing both scenarios of building new or uh, renovating the existing um, And we said that with all of the existing constraints that we have, we still have goals we want to meet. Uh, the, the city has goals for high performing buildings, uh, making sure that it uh, has is efficient in water and energy use, uh, making sure that we take advantage of uh, planting and, and natural landscape as well as roofs to, to deal with storm water and actually create space and outdoor space, not just on the ground, but also on the roof. These are all things that I think are pretty possible. And the city has uh, improved some of its uh, regulations and allowed green roofs and solar panels to work together, uh, which I think is a very positive thing. Uh, we can also uh, introduce uh, solar panels and other on-site renewables that can extend past the, the building footprint when it makes sense and they can become uh, fertilizer, they can become entry uh, pavilions and things. Um, so, um, we, we've seen the, the, the report and the analysis and, and some of the uh, ideas coming out of your workshops and surveys and things like that. Um, and here's our summary of uh, where we see um, the major components of the program. Um, getting to a net program area of 32,550, uh, just <coughs> the bulk of that is classrooms and meeting rooms. Um, but also the gymnasium and auditorium are, are two larger uh, components. Um, but with all of the uh, circulation, uh, mechanical, uh, required vertical circulation as well as quarters, it bumps us up to about 45,000 and change, uh, which is basically the maximum of the entire site. Um, so we could knock the library down and just build this building and nothing can happen like that. Um, so we're, we're in, sort of in a if we accommodate all of these things in single-use program areas, we may not be able to fit it on the site. So hopefully there are ways to find synergies to have uh, functional program areas, share spaces and, and uh, time. Um, or we need to sort of prioritize what, what makes the most sense. We need a full-size gymnasium. Could we go with a, a half-size gym or, or a partial-size gym? Um, there, are, there are ways to do can we find a way to combine the auditorium and the gym into a multi-purpose space with uh, retractable seats or, or other creative solutions? Those are things that we probably want to explore as we look at program targets. Uh, these, th this is uh, you know, sort of our summary of, of, what, of what we've heard. So I already talked about multi multifunctional types of spaces, but. Some of the spaces need to, to serve multi-generational uh, users, so young people, <coughs> um, adults, older adults. Um, we we want to make sure that, that when we get this built that it actually is something that supports the community's needs uh, and it fits in with the community. Uh, and then uh, makes it inviting, so take advantage of maybe daylight and, and views, uh, make it an inviting place of the indoors and outdoors are better than that. Cinder block uh, vault. Um, no, no, uh, uh, not to disparage this, this place, I think, but I, I think this community deserves better than this. Um, and then, um, in order for us to achieve that, um, we feel like the, the engagement process of getting feedback with the community helps to make the design better because it continues to go in the right direction. We listen and, and adjust our design. And then when it gets filled, it actually is a better loved facility that people really are uh, part of the process and their facilities, not the architects leave and, and, and you got, got whatever we wanted to give you. It needs to be more trying to, uh, us to try to find your vision, try to, try to figure out a way to, to build it for something that you want to see. So we're trying not to start with a particular idea in mind. Um, we obviously have our own ideas, so um, we will 
express our ideas, but we want to make sure that we're not going down a path that takes, takes us off the rails. Next. Um, so I'm not going to read all of these, um, but some of the issues that um, we want to make sure is, is the uh, interaction with community space. Uh, you've got the spaces in the community now. You've got that one theater across the street. It serves a certain kind of purpose. Um, you don't necessarily want to supplant um, that type of space and add another one here and then start to compete. We want to make sure that the spaces are actually supporting the community needs in a, in a larger context uh, and make sure that this is an add and not a competition to the existing spaces throughout the community, whether it's across the street or, or down the street. And then um, in terms of architecture, the things that we, we're mostly uh, interested in as we move forward is, is the materials, you know, are they natural, are they synthetic? Um, do you want this architecture to stand out and, and be iconic? Do you want it to blend in you know, a background? Um, I don't have a strong opinion of, about that um, right now, but that will come out of our interactions and listening to you when we get to those things. So that's what we see today, obviously. Um, and uh, so the landscape it, um, it, uh, works pretty well, with, but in terms of its um, relationship to Connecticut Avenue, it doesn't really address the street very well as you would normally expect in a compact, walkable urban community. Uh, the scale, I think, is fine. Uh, it's much taller than the Safeway next door. The Safe, Safeway next door uh, probably doesn't quite fit in either. It's, uh, it seems to be very low and could, could, could do more in, in the community. Uh, across the street, obviously, the, the Avalon Theater, and I think that's a nice, nice block and one and a half a time off the bat if we can. Uh, the way it meets the street uh, and the sidewalk with the burn um, doesn't seem to, to really make a nice walkway for you to, to going down the street or arriving at the, at the building. Um, I mean, I, it looks like it was built up with that burn because you had a mature tree there when it was built and, and that's no longer there. Um, so I think there's opportunities for us to make some changes to that. As you're coming into the building, it's, there's many entrances in the building, so that's one difficult thing for parks and rec to manage. It's, it's just too many entrances. Um, you got parking on the back side, you got an uh, entrance on the south, an entrance on the north. Um, you never want to try to clean that up and make sure, sure the circulation makes a little bit more sense. Um, and then it's obviously a very difficult building if, if, if you were require movement of wheels, whether it's a stroller or a piece of luggage or a wheelchair. Um, it's still doesn't really work very well for people. Next. Um, so I wanted to sort of talk about um, some different ideas. And so we're not suggesting any of these is the right building. We're just trying to get some feedback on what you like, what you don't like. Um, and so we're going to go through this rather quickly and we may go through it quickly and then come back and start again. And but these are um, buildings with different materials, different urban contexts, about the same scale as what could be possible here. In some cases, much larger than what could be here. I uh, just want to sort of uh, get your, your initial reaction. So why don't, you, why don't you sort of run through these rather quickly. So this is a more transparent uh, metallic skin with lots of glass. Um, this is the idea of containers and, and coming together in, in different kinds of ways with the solid and void. Um, this is brick and wood and you know, warm. Um, this is brick and patterned in a mix of uh, open and, and solid. Um, this is the Tenley Library, so it's a lot of glass, but it also has a skin that, that wraps around it mostly. This is the, the new um, Cleveland Park Library, um, and um, it's sort of a similar kind of kind of scale, solid and void, um, with a masonry, but a lighter color than some of the other things we've seen. Um, this is stone, and it, it looks like shingles, but it's stone. This is a, a taller, open plaza area, and it gets wrapped around with uh, enclosed spaces, some solid, some some glass. This is um, sort of similar, different kind of uh, uh, box, but still a, a mixture of solid and glass. 
This is, uh, again, the glass down below, but this actually has a, a recreation on the roof. You can sort of see that impression off to the side. Um, this is in Capitol Hill, a, a, a new uh, brick building at the old Heinz uh, School. Um, that's a little bit larger than we do here, but they have, actually have a roof uh, uh, terrace on, on this building. So um, just trying to, to uh, I, uh, get ideas about different things. This actually parallels the, the, the street frontage. Um, next step. And then we can you know, go to the next step and, and have planted walls and, and try to reinforce the whole uh, greenery. Uh, and this is just to say, two buildings don't have to be the same. So the one on the left is, is more masonry and traditional, the one on the right is more modern, but it creates a space in between. And I think that's what you have here today, is you have an outdoor space between the library and the community center. We want to try to you know, acknowledge that and, and make sure that it happens so that we actually create an outdoor room or enhance the outdoor room that we already have. Um, and then um, this is uh, the Shepherd Community Center that uh, Brent was talking about that's just about to start construction. Just showing this because we, we we're using different kinds of treatments here. Uh, we have uh, cement panels and uh, aluminum fins. Um, but we created a sloped walkway that integrates with the steps to the tra transition. Uh, so we can, instead of having a ramp, we just have a sloped walk and get rid of a lot of animals, which is something that might be worth considering in front of um, And then this is just, uh, just showing the sort of a mixture of colors and entrance and making it open and inviting and, and relate to the street with a, a grand entrance, but still have a way for uh, wheels to. Um, so, um, would everybody like to maybe raise their hands on what they like and don't like about them? Sure. Go back to the... Is that? Raise your hands more more. Yeah. <laughs> just, I think we just sort of want to get a, like a majority uh, or minority uh, view. And, and if anybody has a particular comment that they want to give, I think we'd like to sort of understand you know, what you like or not.
kids and I think there have been a lot of discussion in meetings prior to this and remembering yes this is about the village but this is also about um, Ward 3 you know and others that would be using this um, I'm here representing the family voice uh, I live in the neighborhood and I was trying to get my kids to come and they were like I don't even know what goes on in that building mm -hmm. so it's not an inviting building and we really need to make sure that we have space that's going to be open for families. I appreciate the comment about strollers and all that, so I just want to make sure that that's also represented. And I'm hoping there'll be a lot more discussions because there are not a lot of people here tonight, so I'm feeling a little pressure to have to make some decisions that I'm hoping others will be included in as well, who couldn't be here for babysitting reasons and so forth. Um, were you here when we talked about the schedule? Yeah, I, so I mean, I have other opportunities. Yes, and I, I saw your last slide that said there'd be a December date, so, yeah. I uh, liked some of the examples that used a lot of glass facades on the ground level. That created a lot of open and inviting, inviting appearance. Uh, that, both of those are ugly as heck, <laughs> stacked boxes. And I think Roberta may have mentioned something about the Example with the uh, vines growing on the side of the buildings. I would not vote for that either. Yeah. And then after that, uh, folks at the table. Yeah, yeah just but just to clarify a little bit, I, and I totally get the maintenance and the vines, but they're not necessarily vines. Green walls are constructed and developed in a very specific manner in order to take care of themselves very low maintenance, uh, not to mention of the environmental benefits and energy environments that come along with it. So not that I, <clears throat> I'm not saying I don't disagree, but I think there are a lot of aspects to it and it can be done in a way that actually is very beneficial. I'm not saying that's what we want to do, but just to keep in mind that it's not necessarily just a have it or not have it kind of, kind of thing. And I certainly, I also agree, I think glass would be anything that opens up creates the openness, the inviting, takes that corner and just opens it completely is a good thing, is a very good thing. Uh, and if I can throw in my last, which is the roof terrace, the green adding to the, whether it's Ellie, whether it's lead or whatever the case, but uh, an open roof terrace, a garden terrace, uh, the green roof, the whole bit, I think that is an incredibly highly beneficial thing. I think it adds to a building like a lot of people just, if you haven't seen it or haven't participated or lived in one or have an office building that has one, uh, I would strongly suggest finding, seeing one 
and just sitting and being a part of it because it is really no different, if not more exciting, than being sitting in a park sometimes. Um, may I? Barbara Robinson. Uh, to echo what people have said, I definitely agree. As much glass as close to the stream, as low down in terms of the way you read the space for access and also to make it inviting, I disagree with what I know about plant walls. Maybe the architect can speak to that because plant walls as I know it and have seen them require quite a lot of maintenance. I love them, but can you speak to whether or not that is a maintenance issue as Loretta has reflected? Just to go on, I think the interior space is indefensible when you talked about this as a vault. There is no sense of articulation of space in the interior and so you don't know what's going on. So there's, it's a barricade environment. So we're looking at the exterior, but I hope you will be talking about the integrated, the way the inside and the outside speak to one another. And the best building on the block is Bill's, the Avalon. And I assume, Bill, that's part of why you're on this committee. That is nice. And I don't, I haven't heard that mentioned, but to me that's the flagship on the street. Uh, those of us who've been behind that restoration and support it, we want to make sure that it creates a sense of importance and value. It's a, it's a wonderful, important, historic building. And so the echo would be great. I'm just curious, um, if I could interrupt you, that the building, uh, building? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So I, I do think it would have been very helpful in articulating what your vision is to also talk about how the interior space and the exterior are going to relate. And yay about protecting the, the um, space between the library and this building. I think it's extremely important. And I'm sort of behind on the conversation. But I know that the library has was not entirely in the thinking about how to go forward. Could you talk about? how these two entities, um, DPR and the library, are going to coordinate. Thank you. Sure. And Ms. Barbara, is that Sorry. Better? Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think, um, you know, we've, we've talked about it internally, the collaboration between DPR and the, and the library folks. Um, and I think David actually mentioned that we, we, um, we uh, in discussions and just the way the budgets have fallen in the budget cycles, we just happened to get our money before the, the library got theirs. Um, but we are in, in coordination with them about um, how this is going to impact their property. But more importantly, I think it's, it's about um, working with the library to come up with ideas where we, we do something really cool and innovative here um, that doesn't exclude them from doing something similar. So we want to make sure that it's um, a collaborative project, even though they may not have the funding to do what they're going to do right now, we want to make sure that's that's well thought through. I just wanted to make sure you, that that was, that was well heard. Thank you. Yes. Commissioner Sweet, yeah, just, just on that very point, we have had a lot of discussions with the library over the last two years, and we do want to work cooperatively with them. We started this project looking at this as a campus, and we realized the library was behind in its thinking about this. And so we went ahead because we thought we needed to do that. that it was important that this building address. But we hope and still believe that the library is going to be working with us on that. We want the buildings, as you, you said, to communicate with each other. And not only architecturally, but we want people to be going from one building to the other so that there is a, a pathway essentially between them through this courtyard that invites people to go between the buildings. So we, we fully expect that to happen. And as you said, Brent, it's, it's just a matter of when the, when the money comes through, essentially. But uh, I know the library is very interested in doing that, and we need to work cooperatively with them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I'm agree. you in would be nice. I have lived across the street for six and a half years and um, we never know what's in here. We don't know what 
goes on in here. Um, I, unless I early vote, there's never a reason to come in here. Because um, I can't vote here, and I have to go down the street on the other side of the street. Uh, but just from the family perspective, it would be so lovely if there was like some rainy day space. There's like a group of nannies and babysitters that on a rainy day when they're hard up for the kids to get out of the house, they come here and they sit in the basement and it is so <laughs> depressing. And that is where they gather routinely if the weather is crappy. They come here and sit in the basement. Um, so having a space that is sort of like a draw that, oh, there's that space we can go and be and exist. And that's, that is definitely brings kind of a sense of community. Um, another thing we're hard up for is a place we could gather family, friends, have a birthday party that's not going to cost us $500 in this town. That would be so nice, and it would be a nice way for the city to make a little bit of money, you know, but to have a room that you could gather for a family reunion, something that is reasonable and has people come there. And then um, there is an amazing gymnastics program that happens this room, that equipment. They have a draw all over the city. It is not just for three. People come from all over the city to be in those guys' programs, which I discovered by accident last year because I was like, what is wrong with me? How have I never signed up for one damn thing in the building across the street? You know, we always run to Rockville and we go to all these other places. So I signed up and I mean, the program is incredible. It is such a good program. They do not have good equipment. They do not have good space. But Question about, about the um, the rainy day space for like uh, Would you want that to be facing Connecticut Avenue and visible to people walking by, or would you want that to be towards the back with, with natural light, uh, but not so sort of visible? Um, that's a great question. Uh, everything is kind of hidden that's around back right now, and it seems it seems like it would be more natural a natural draw to have it. and then they'll start using it and they'll use it for lots of other things. But right now, you just don't go. Classes. I think a glass uh, entryway on the Connecticut Avenue side would be much more inviting. From a fencing point of view, we, we have a big problem in the evening with the evening sun coming in the windows. And uh, I don't know how you can have glass on the second floor windows and still block the sunlight from uh, uh, com coming in. But it's impossible to see out of the side of the fencing mask when you have bright light shining in like that. We've even they have uh, vertical blinds on the windows, but half of them are gone, <laughs> never replaced. We've uh, gone to painting the windows with white uh, washable paint to block the sunlight coming in. So is there a way to have windows and not have sunlight coming in? So let me respond to that, and I'll respond to a couple of other comments as well. Um, what do I see as opportunities in terms of having that space? One of the opportunities I see is making the north side where the garden is buildings more glasses so that you actually have a visual connection between those two. And with north lights, you don't have direct sunlight at, um, you might at certain times of the year, late in the day, early in the day, but you can actually control the north light much better. And it's a, it's a, it's a cleaner light as it doesn't get so hot. Um, so there may be ways of uh, dealing with that, uh, where you might have the south side of the building more solid and the north side more glassy. Around the front, maybe more glassy down low and more solid uh, because of the western center might be harder to control. Those are sort of the initial. 
initial thoughts that we were just sort of talking about. And those are intended to be um, responsive to the site and also to the solar and wind orientation so that it helps to make the high performing building. So if you prefer to have uh, natural light in that space and in some of the other spaces, um, I think you can find ways of doing that. If you prefer to have no windows, There are ways of doing it where you can have high light to sky lights or clear story windows where you don't actually see out of it, you have natural light. So we'll get into sort of more details about as the program goes forward, talking about what are the specifics for each of the kinds of spaces. In some cases, those spaces will need to be multi-purpose space for maybe having some trade-offs. Uh, but some may be purpose-built uh, single-use spaces. Um. Okay, so uh, first off, I, I want to um, very strongly second what, what Amy said earlier. With the uh, 20 people in the audience and seven task force members up here, I too feel a bit of pressure and um, a bit unprepared to, to respond to some of these questions. The, there hasn't been a comment that we've heard here yet that wasn't specifically addressed in the report that, that we did. That was 950 people responding. This is just 20, 25 people. So that sample is a lot stronger. So all of the things that you've heard people talk about today are very strongly reported in that survey. Plus, we have a few hundred uh, comments where people wrote in other that give a lot more in depth than just you know the statistical data that, that the survey gathered. So, so I would say that we need to look at that uh, because that represents a lot more than, than just what this, this group does. Additionally, <clears throat> looking at pictures is, is nice, but I would never vote on anything looking at a picture without seeing uh, something in person. So as, as much as a two-dimensional picture is a, an entryway into something, it certainly doesn't supplant seeing a three-dimensional building and walking around and actually seeing how, how everything looks. And lastly, the only other thing I'd like to say now is that I hope that you send us a copy of this PowerPoint because nobody that is just looking at this video will have any idea what we're talking about because they won't have uh, the PowerPoint to go along with them. So when we post the video, we'd like to also have the attachment so we could reference people which slides to look at when that part of the discussion is going on. If I could, I can, I'd be happy to address a couple of your comments. Um, so the goal of tonight's meeting was really to introduce the, the project team to you um, and talk about the milestone schedules. We, we certainly have a report full of information that we'll digest. Um, but I think it's good to also hear from people uh, in person. So we're, we're, we're doing that tonight. This is sort of the typical uh, DPR process that we go through. Um, the pictures are also nice, but you're right. I think that it is it's helpful to actually see some in person. And so for, for some other projects, what we've done, if folks are interested, is we can set up tours of recently completed BPR facilities. Uh, if, you're, if, if folks are interested, we can set that up. Uh, you know, Kenworth would be a, a, a nice place to visit. Uh, it's something that Bell previously designed and is really well loved uh, in the community. Um, and we have a couple more that are recently opened. Edgewood is going to open, and uh, we believe this month, um, which will be a brand new facility. Uh, and a couple more, so we're happy to set that up. And also, one, one last thing, the, um, all, after all of our uh, meetings, we post the uh, presentation and meeting notes to the project website. So at the very end of the presentation, there's actually a link uh, that people can go to and be able to see all the presentations from every Every meeting, one of the agency reports and all that stuff. So I encourage it. And it's, it's a long website, but if you just go to uh, your favorite search engine and, and just Google DGS and Chevy Chase Community Center, it'll pop up. It'll probably be the first one to pop up. So you can go mark that and be able to see all the uh, presentation materials. Okay, well, you can also email me the link so I can make sure that I have a right to uh, have to. Sure. Yeah, and that's what we also pass around a, a right. And, and the last thing when you mentioned that, you know, there are. You know, we mentioned I think three or four different properties that we should look at. Well, there were about 15 different pictures that we were shown. So, um, if the
the three or four that you're talking about are really the three or four that we should be uh, looking at, then let's look at those. If they're all 15 and things that we might get some ideas about, then we should be looking at all 15 of them. Yeah, so, so I just wanted to sort of put in context that um, we're architects and we communicate visually better than we do verbally. And when we read words, we don't necessarily know what, what's behind the words. Um, and so we're, we, we're not saying that any of these are what you're going to get at all. This is, do you, you like glassy? Do you like warm? Do you like cool? Do you like dynamic? Do you like subdued? Uh, do you like it looking solid? Uh, we're just trying to sort of take some of these visual ideas and get a sense of what the community wants. If everyone says, oh, we want all glass and steel, then we know where we're going. Then everyone says, oh, we just want a, a brick box with punch windows, and then we know that. I know that it's not going to be that, that cut and dry. When it comes, when we pull it forward, we'll say, okay, what I've heard so far is many people like the, the open, glassy lower level. Um, that's great. It gives us a good idea of what to get from. You know, reading a survey, I, I wouldn't necessarily get that, that preference. That may not be the whole community's preference, but it's probably a pretty good sample of, of what people want. Um, but, you know, and, and, I, and I, I seem to hear People like warm inviting, and you know, and, and and that's the music to my ears because I like that too. So that that sends us in a direction where we can come back with the real building, the, the real size that's on this site, and it says, okay, these are the ideas, and this is where we're going, and then we get some context-specific reactions, and then maybe visit some of these other sites to see other things that are possible. But I don't want to constrain you to this is what was done before. This is this is all you get. I, not you to have something. That, um, Builds on those things and doesn't fit. Most of the words that you just said are in the first two pages of the report, I think, when uh, Randy wrote most of the, the narrative, and those words are almost ripped right from that, warm and inviting and, uh, and open, and people can see things, what's going on. So, so uh, I think that that was a very strong consensus from all the input that we had. Oh, uh, this is a, a question about the design inside the building to serve the functions and activities that happen in here. Someone had mentioned the gymnastics class, fencing classes, dancing classes, pottery classes. And some of these programs have specific design requirements that they need in order to um, carry on those activities. So this is kind of a process question. I know we're talking a little bit about the feeling of the outside of the building, but how will you um, learn about and incorporate interior design issues for all these activities that occur and some new ones that may occur in the center that we haven't envisioned yet. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the next step for us is to try to, to take all of the information that you put together very well uh, and uh, our analysis of the site and some of the constraints that we have and see what goes where. Uh, so we'll do a um, the programmatic calculation. This space needs this much, this, this use needs this much space. You define this many people. Uh, because it's a mixed use, it has to have storage or, or in those things and we'll, we'll quantify all of that. And then we'll do an adjacency diagram and see, okay, these spaces need to be near the outside of the windows. These can be interior. These should be all on the ground floor. These can be anywhere. Uh, and we'll analyze that and we'll do a block on stack diagram. That will show us where we can logically put things and see where it works, where it doesn't work. And then we'll look at the vertical circulation, elevators and stairs. Try to avoid the need for those as much as possible, but it's going to be more multi-story buildings, so we're going to have to deal with those. But if we can get uh, the main floor on Connecticut Avenue or more closely to Connecticut Avenue, then, then we can make that more inviting. Um, so that some of those things um, you know, you know, are going to dictate what goes where. Uh, and then we'll come back to you and say, here are all the spaces, and we couldn't get this space in, it just didn't fit, but we got this space in here, and you can accommodate these ones in different ways, and, and sort of see what the trade-offs are. And hopefully we're reading the priorities of the community and, and what's important and what's not. And, uh, maybe, you know, get more than, than you expect. <coughs> but I, I want to make sure that uh, I'm clear. I don't think we're going to get everything that you want. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but we do 
not a lot of constraints. So then when, after we do that, then we would start to look at um, architectural treatments and materials and things like that after we, we had the right approach to, to the patients. Thank you. Um, so I mentioned I'm Patrick Williams on the site uh, task force. Um, full disclosure, I know David pretty well. Uh, David and I served on the EIADC board together in 2009. And we have gone after projects together as well as we are competing against each other. So uh, I know him very well, I know his company very well. Having said that, um, I will say a couple of things. So, I actually really appreciate the presentation that you're making to us tonight. And I think there is value in showing these images just as a visceral reaction, which we're all we're getting that feedback right now. I want to go back to a couple of things that were said before Jerry mentioned. I think a few other people were probably around as well. There was a really very robust um, uh, outreach that the community did, the ANC did, on behalf of the community to actually get the community educated as to what it would mean to modernize this building, but even to educate people on what it even means for what an architect does and how it's going to help the community. And at the end of that process, as Jerry mentioned, you know, we had a study, we got a report of recommendations in it, which I do know was actually in the RFP documents, probably came a little bit late in the process. Um, notwithstanding the fact that I do think there's a lot of value in what you presented here today, I'm just wondering, um, from my perspective, and again, maybe, maybe a little bit of the architect talking more. So, there was some mention here about some program, I think a lady in the corner there talked about uh, gymnastics, maybe fencing, and some other things. There is, at the end of the document, an attempt was made to actually come up with a program that we consider would be the program, at the very least would be something that would attract more attention the building to get people to come here to use the building. And what I thought was really interesting in that process is programmatically, and again, using a little bit of architectural speech here, programmatically, it's actually not bigger than the existing building. If I'm not mistaken. So if you think about it, it's, it's the increase of 13,000. Well, peaks, including the basement. To be exact, uh, the, the program without the gym. Okay. It's the same size as the existing building. Okay. Approximately. But in the, in the study, if I remember well, so you have a program, but then you have a desire as to where things need to be located. And it came, became clear, at least in my mind, that there was a desire for some spaces in the program to not necessarily be within the footprint of this building. I'm not trying to get too much into detail here, but what I was hoping see from some of this presentation here is, okay, we've already spoken to the district and to you through the district, and we have told you what we would like to see here. One of the things that they would have been valued, and I know some of the buildings that you showed here were actually your buildings, but we actually even got mentioned, I think, um, is it Brent? Mm -hmm. Mentioned. Brent. Like, Brent. Brent. Thank you. Brent, that, um, you actually did the Kenilworth Recreation Center. You, you showed images of the um, Shepherd Community Center. I think it would be nice to have said, okay, our community said here we want a half gym. Have you ever accomplished doing a half gym before? Which facility would have done it? And then show the images of that half gym. Palisades. I'm sorry? Palisades. Great. You did Palisades? Yeah. No, but the. Okay, so all I'm, all I'm saying is, Show us images of precedence of these different spaces within the building. And then show us what you think was the real success with those images so that we can now connect with something we have done in the past, something that we've always put on the table. So I think maybe that's something a good takeaway from this meeting for the next time so that when we start looking at more images, it's not too abstract. Is more in line with what you have accomplished in the past. And I'm saying that knowing that you have a lot of successes in the past. Um, I think it's going to take a little bit more for the community to 
start sinking your teeth into the exterior of the building, and there's going to be some complexities with that because I think it's almost becoming clear that the majority of the structure of this building is going to main, be maintained. But there's things that can be done architecture, as you know, to accomplish an exterior envelope that will be more high performance, uh, more engaged with the community. And I'll close by saying one last thing. So we talked about engaging in regards to a building and getting people to be engaged with the building from Connecticut. But also I remember, and again, I could be wrong, in the study, I think there was talk of value of some of this, this project being the start of creating a town center for Chepche. And if we look at the plaza in between these two buildings, I think there's a really great opportunity for the beginning of a dialogue to see if this building can actually help with determining how a town center could actually be created so that the community can feel engaged around it. You know, this building is not only going to be for people who are coming there because they know the gym class is going on, or a fencing class is going on. But you want people that are coming down the street that visually they get connected to this space. And you're going to say, wait a minute, I want to go in there and see what's going on. And that's not going to happen from the inside of the building. It's going to happen from outside, it's going to happen from the landscape, it's going to happen from the plaza. Okay. Hi, my name is Edwina Smith. I'm just putting a plug in for the um, seniors who come here every week. For uh, We use this actual room here and the other rooms in the building for exercise classes. And I was wondering about the parking, how that was going to be in the future because it's very important. There's not enough parking in this whole neighborhood for people coming here. And I'm sure that also applies to fam young members, family members coming in here. So, so right now, um, we don't know the quantity of the parking space. I don't think it's going to be less than what's there now. It may be the same. It may be slightly. Okay. Anybody have a question? Are there questions after this? Just wanted to make sure that at least everyone's had an opportunity to ask your questions. At the end of the presentation, people can ask questions also. They'll be able to ask questions at the end of the presentation. So, anybody at the table have any comments about the uh, um, one more there? I have questions, sir. I have a question um, because I'm always interested in uh, how much things cost. Is would it be more expensive to tear down the whole building, or to would it be cheaper to keep the uh, the, the, the building exterior itself? I mean, maybe just you know change some of the outside of it, but to to keep the actual building rather than tearing it down, which would be more uh, um, which would be more expensive? Well, the definitive answer is it depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Um, it depends on how far you're going. So there's, there's a tipping point. If you try to keep a building and you alter it to a certain level, it makes more sense to do that. You get to a certain point of alteration and it makes more sense to tear it down. So how do you know that? You don't. And so that you analyze it and you see how you can adapt the existing building. And you get to a certain point and say, okay, it just doesn't make sense to keep it. Now you may have other constraints. So you might uh, have a non-conforming building, meaning that you have more zoning allowed in the existing building than you could build today, which may say, yeah, you're going to spend more money, but, it, but for zoning reasons, you keep the building. Or you may have an overlay that says, this building is historic. Um, and so you have an extra constraint there, so you may end up keeping it um, and not getting as much program as you so, so right now, we don't know. Uh, and that's why we still have on the table both keeping the building, you know, altering it, or um, building it. Will that decision be made before you start? So we know ahead of time with you. It, it'll be part of the process. <laughs> we would we would know in the next couple of months which direction. Oh, well, well, before the construction. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
seems to me. Can you hear me now? I wanted to thank you for coming and giving this presentation because, you know, as a citizen, we have the um, request for proposal. We know you were selected. We're just not sure um, what you've read and what you've done and what your ideas are. And it seems to me that you know that we have a big report that came out and you're pretty aware that you've gone through it. And it looks, it sounds like to me that you're open and that's where we really love that. And I think a lot of the things you said resonates with me, which is the warmth and the inviting kind of um, structure for the building. And I do believe that a building conveys something. You know, like the Kennedy Center, I just drove past, you know, in a taxi and it looks really, really nice. You know, you want to go in. I think for a community center, it could truly be the heart of our little neighborhood that could draw other people to the city, both in the city and also in Maryland. And so I'm really hoping that um, the way it's constructed on the outside, it's almost like wayfaring signs, like in the airport. You just know where to go in. You know where the entrance is. You want to go there. And that's really important, I think, for a library, for a center. And I think that we're, we're three, and, and DC is, you know, a high tech, it's like a high tech place. The mayor has big goals. I would love to see more lead, you know, um, to be compliant with lead, and also to be thinking that it's going to be 50 years maybe before this building gets renovated again, and that maybe we should be the example um, of things that we use, like the glass that we use here, that could be energy efficient, and everything else. I mean, to have that idea in our heads while we're designing the outside and the inside to me is very, very important. I would love to be able to tell my children, you know, look, look at what they've used, you know, and this is something that maybe we could use in our own home, you know, in 10 years or so forth, you know, five years from now, as we're renovating ourselves, what's being, you know, what's being done. So I, I hope that you keep an open mind and you tell us what the schedule is so that we can continue to give you input um, and we know where you are and if we can be a lot step as a community. So thank you so much. And um, this will be at least lead center. Any, any other comments on the design from anybody at the table here? Hey, just one question. Or is there more of the presentation? Or is it, so if we have other questions, maybe not reaction to be asked. Now would be a good time to ask those. Uh, do you have any more, any more things for no, I just want to say um, thank you. Yeah, tonight's meeting was more sort of a, a vision and an introduction sort of uh, preparation, but we have, uh, I just want to make sure everybody we have in the report. It's extremely thorough. Um, sorry. It's extremely thorough. Um, it has a ton of great information. Um, I think tonight for us was sort of, this is sort of the process that the PBR goes through um, to introduce our architects and sort of have an initial conversation with the community uh, to sort of set expectations and things like that. So, we appreciate your, your, your patience as we go through our process. I did have one question. Um, if you could go back to the <coughs> slide on the schedule. <coughs> there. Yeah. I think it, it would be helpful if you just spent a couple of minutes just, and I am talking through it, what these milestones mean. And then I think also, to the best of your ability, giving some sense of potential for where delays are either likely to happen or unlikely to happen. But I think giving us some sense of where this is headed, because you know, there are there are many people in this room that are familiar with these types of projects, but myself included, there are many people who are not. And so I think it'd be really helpful if we just walk us through. That, that's a very good question. And um, one of the points we wanted to get across in this presentation tonight is when we talked about the four items that we had, the zoning, the historic eligibility, the program, and the existing conditions, all four of those things, if you think of it as like uh, swimming lanes, right? We have, so we have four lanes that we're having to deal with right now, we're starting out with. And all of those four lanes are eventually going to come together and give us the answer that you guys are, that for instance, you were asking, are we going to tear down or are we going to renovate? Well, the historic eligibility and zoning is going to help answer that question for us. We, we can sit here at all night and go, no, let's tear it down. But we have to deal with the restrictions that the site provides us. And so 
all of this has to come together in certain stages at certain times. And so the key milestones we have is tonight is our first uh, uh, reach out to you guys, the listening to you. There's, you've given us a lot of good feedback on, um, on directions and ideas and what, what basically feedback from the report that we also get from the report. So the next step for us to do is after today is to go through and do a programming workshop with DPR. And that's where we're going to be able to, like right now in the, in the programming report, you guys think called out a 6,000 or 7,000 square, I think 6,000 square foot gymnasium with locker rooms and bathrooms and so on and so forth. I think that's what's in the report. You know, we're going to begin to figure out, is it going to be six? Is it, could we get away with four, 4,000? You know, 5,000, what, what can we do? And also begin to continue on the report. There's a lot of talk in the report about the multi purpose spaces. You know, what spaces align with what? Like, the ballet can, can only work with certain things, and the fencing can only work with certain things. You can't have certain things get cross pollinated. That's our next major step is to begin to tackle the Jace, like what David said earlier about the block and stacking. That's what we're beginning to start tackling next. So that's mid November. We'll have that. Checked, checked off our list. The next after that is the finance rec recommendation presentation, um, which is basically a report that we're going to give back to DGS and EPR, which will then also go to the ANC to say, okay, this is what you're asking for, this is what we have found so far, and hopefully by the, and that's late November. And late November, we won't have the historic eligibility determined yet. That will happen in mid to mid by mid December. We should have a preliminary uh, review by HPO. So there's only certain things we're going to be able to, to recommend in the report. We're not going to say tear down and replace at that point yet, still. But we're going to say you have ADA problems, you have this problem, <coughs> this, this is the program we think, this is the program we think will line up well. That will all be part of that. Uh, late November report that we're going to issue. And after that, you, uh, DGS and DPR and you guys will also review that report. So we'll give you near the end of the, end of the month to provide comments and then we'll have the, the next community meeting which will basically to be summarize what we found in that report and then begin the next step of, okay, here's what, here's what you've asked for, here's what we think we can begin to do, how the interior begins to work with the exterior. Right? And then we'll come back with the comments that you gave today and the feedback you gave from the, from the images of, you know, okay, you mentioned, for example, you wanted a warm building. Well, what's a warm building look like? Some people it's concrete, some people it's wood, you know. But, you know, what, is that, what does that begin to look like? And um, also, you, one of the key comments that I, I, I acquired from you said is, I heard a couple of times of village people. Make it, make it feel like it feels like part of the village. And so um, at that next meeting, we'll begin to ch start chipping away at that. It's like, okay, what, what does that look like? You know, you could do that a thousand different ways, right? We can make it look like a French village. We can make it like a German village, Italian village, American village, you know? There's a lot of different ways to, to tackle that. Um, so that's early December. We'll come back here. Review the report. We'll review the uh, begin to chip away at what things going to look like. And um, we took out one of my favorite graphics, which is basically a bunch of squiggly lines that comes to a flat line. And the idea of that of that is uh, basically right now we're at the beginning phase where we have a ton of options. And over the next couple months, we're going to try to begin to slim it down as much as possible. So at the end, we will have definitively say, we're doing this, and here's how we're doing it, here's why we're doing it, and here's what it's going to look like. So it's all part of a process. So, um, after, so after next month, that's when we really begin to get into the concept design, and uh, the master, and we'll, that's where we'll, we will know, hopefully by that time, we'll have a, HPO will say, yes, it's historic, potentially historic, or no, it's not. And it's, and if they say no, then that basically means we have a good opportunity to basically say, okay, we can tear the building down, right? If they come back and say, 
well, we need to go to HPRD. Am I saying this correctly? If they say we have to go to HPRD um, for further review, and that could delay the whole, pro the whole process. This whole scheduling gets thrown in. You're asking for delays, sir? That would throw out the schedule entirely because if we, we can't really design something that we don't know what we can, what our, what we can do. Um, and so we're hoping in, in December the historic, uh, our historic team is basically going to meet with HPO and hopefully HPO will come back and say, no, the building is not historic. Because that basically checks a major check. It basically ends the swimming lane for us. We already have, we know that answer, which gives us, begins to feed into what the building can do, what we can do with the design. Then at the end of uh, late uh, January, as we go through December and January, that's where we're going to begin to work on the concept design and, you know, putting the program to, to uh, basically a floor plan and what the building actually have elevations and, you know, hand sketches of what the building could look like three-dimensionally and stuff. And that will then be presented to you in end of, uh, end of February. So those are the three, three main dates for the community interactions. Today, December, and then February of next year. Does that make sense? Thank you. Um, <laughs> All right, that was that was very very helpful. You mentioned a, a fair amount of. Um, at one point, you mentioned like input, or either coming back to the community and also receiving input from the ANC. And I think just so you're aware, you know, we have obviously this task force, um, and we can schedule meetings at different points. We also have a regularly scheduled ANC meetings, um, one on the 25th of November. Mm -hmm. you should write this down. Um, and one on the 9th of December. Um, but those, that's it between now and January for those meetings. And I think you know, I think you should. I would just encourage you to work with us and with the larger ANC to make sure that we're giving lots of opportunities, even if it's not one of the bolded community meetings. But just to, even just to say, this is the, the presentation of recommendations for your review. Because I think the more that that can be public, um, I, I hope I'm speaking for everyone here. People would appreciate that. Thank you. I think that like that kind of walkthrough is just so helpful. Yeah, and I this is a little off topic. I'm not talking about schedule, but I just want to remind people that I think I agree with Ms. Chain. We have to be forward thinking. We have to plan for the future because I just have been involved in two projects. The community's not planning for the future. We have a brand new school that's already. We have to do added construction on it because they wanted to keep it the same as what it is. The future means more people more programming and thing. We have a rec center that is not gonna be available for future programming. And they kept saying, it can go to the community center, it can go to the community center. But we don't have the option to go anywhere else. This is the community center. We have to plan for the future more than staying at what we need today. That's all I'd like to say. Any other comments? That was a great explanation, thank you. That. Especially knowing that might be able to easily check off the box plot historic eligibility. That was that was helpful. I have a, another question. If, if it's another box that you get to check off, is there anything in the, the current uh, proposed DC comprehensive plan, especially with the Rock Creek elements that deal with the zoning issues up and down Connecticut Avenue, especially, that is something that you have to check in with or check a box off that you'll be able to go ahead with uh, whatever it is that you and the, the groups decide to do or is there anything in that that's going to potentially uh, cause you to reconsider things? I think right now our biggest concern that we're focused on which is what we included in this is the bar ratio. That basically limits how big the footprint of the building can be and how much area is inside that footprint. And right now you only have, if the calculations are correct and the way we're determining it, if we look to get that validated, uh, which DGS has reached out to a zoning attorney, um, that's our big concern right now. Once we can get that resolved, that's another big check mark and the answer to the, answer, uh, answer the question of what we can do. Yeah, and, um, we, we need to take a look at the conference plan and see how, how it works. So we have to, that would be another thing.
Yeah, there's yeah. a number of things that we want to look at. And some of those forward-looking planning uh, documents and where things are going, uh, we should be looking at those. Okay. Yeah, let me uh, say a couple of things about the room. <clears throat> I thought it was an excellent presentation. And uh, it, was, it was at the level that uh, it should have been, so thank you for that. Uh, the comprehensive plan uh, shows this site, this one site, which is uh, medium density residential, uh, low density commercial uh, over retail. So that would allow considerably more square footage on the site. Allow up to 50 feet in height. Uh, <clears throat> the other uh, question is, I'm not, you know, this being a city building, I think uh, if we needed a, to zone the whole site is, uh, is what the front part is. I, 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 is this something that you guys could uh, ask the city to look into also if we ran into a, a square footage problem? We, Greg, uh, before, before we get that far, I think if this, if the residential space behind the building, Back of the back of the lot. Uh, I that would have to have a special exception already. Right. So there's probably something out there now that allows more allows the use of that space. Have you looked at that? Do you know whether there is a special exception? I have not found a special exception with the property yet. That would be I, I, I would just be astounded if there isn't one because. We have to have special exceptions for all of the parking lots around here, which are all in uh, R1B zone, zones. So I, I think there probably is something out there. And, and I can just add a quick comment. We are working with a zoning attorney that works that has a contract with DGS on all these issues. So we're we're going we're to dig into this as we go through uh, the next few weeks. Sure. So the other just thing I want to mention is that the program in the Report that the ANC did is basically based on the program, the size of this building as it is now, with the exception of the gymnasium, which was, which was thought to be an add on. So if you were going to reuse this building, theoretically that program would fit with the exception of the gymnasium. Hypothetically, yes. Hypothetically, yes. Anybody, uh, does anybody else have any questions? Quick follow up. DPR programming workshop, uh, does that only include those programs that are held at the community center that are part of DPR, or does that include programs that are held at the community center that are not part of DPR? Say not part of DPR, is there? There like, are many programs here that are not affiliated oh, with DPR. Oh, that's what you're saying. So we would involve the staff here to make sure we're, we're being inclusive of all the stuff that's right. The staff might not even be the right people. There, there's a lot of individuals that run programs here that uh, okay. it's not like when um, Commissioner Clayman over there at the end and myself were working on a programming task force to look for other space for programs. DPR said, don't worry about our programs, we'll find space for our programs. <coughs> but half the programs that we have on our list are not DPR programs. So when you have DPR programming workshop, does that include or exclude those programs? Let me just clarify. So this is architect speak, not regular speak. <laughs> um, we're talking about facility programming. So the spaces that we need to create for activities to occur. So this is not working out what the programs might be programmatically, what space do we need to create? Right, but some of those programs that you'd be addressing that DPR knows very well because they're their programs, but there are others that they don't know because they are not DPR programs. You, yeah, it would, be, it would accommodate both of those. So sometimes we will do a, a programming workshop and we'll have an activity and a, and a facility uh, track. And we'll look at what activities do you want to occur in spaces you need to create that are specific to those activities and then we match the two together. Uh, we always try to plan for flexibility so that outside programs can come in to multi-purpose type spaces or in the future if things change you actually have flexibility to, to the, the building doesn't become a way of. 
It is a good question, though. Could we could we work with you guys to make sure we're capturing all the the programs that are currently happening here, just, just in case we miss something? Okay, thank you. Useful if a couple of the folks from our task force uh, came to this meeting. It could, it could be um, because there may be stuff that we're not considering that you might have insight on. So I, that may be a good idea. Let me. I'll, we'll just talk about it as a team. And I think it's okay. I'll just keep you posted. Thanks, Chris. Parking and a, uh, an environmental issue, I guess. Uh, is it going to be possible, for instance, to do something with the parking? Let's assume we can keep all of the parking spaces that we've got and do something in the back of the building to preserve that parking. Something to cover the parking that, that would have solar panels on top, or would have green roof on top, or would do something else to uh, enhance that area, to use it in a better way. Is that something that you can consider? I'll certainly consider it. Um, it may be a problem with lot occupancy by putting something like that on the roof. Uh, that, that it's, uh, that's a zoning constraint too. We, we would definitely be doing something um, along the edge of the pavement, uh, bio uh, retention or something to deal with stormwater management. Um, but I think it's a good idea to try to look at that as, as an opportunity for something else. I think that's, that's one area where I know the mayor is pushing for and the council is pushing for a lot more energy independence and renewables. That, and, and they're looking specifically at parking lots as a way to do that. So I think maybe the city would be willing to work with us on that to make sure that we have an opportunity to, to take advantage of that. Yeah, if you go to the Middle East, they have uh, parking canopies that are prefabricated that have solar panels on top of them. And I don't think that, I don't think they'd be considered a building because they're completely open. <coughs> yeah, just so maybe you get the special reception, maybe you know, some sort of relief on it. You might do something as a demonstration. Uh, so I have a couple of more questions. I think one of them goes straight to slide that you have here. So you mentioned earlier on that there is going to be some engagement with the library. I think it's fair to say that there is enough synergy um, between these two buildings that you can't do anything here without understanding what's happening or going to happen over there. <coughs> Just to go backwards a little bit, I'm not sure if this was part of the process that the ANC did, but it is the same architect design both buildings. I believe his name was Saturday. So there was an attempt, if I'm not mistaken, to seek uh, historic status for the building. And I don't think it was successful. So I'm not sure what has happened between now and then to suggest that it would... Do you know when that happened? I, I would actually send you the document. I believe it was in the 1990s. So I'm saying that to say that it may not be, in my mind, and not HBRB, anything that has happened between now and then to make them go back and think that they overlooked something back then. So I'm just trying to look at how successful that would be in regards to timing on the schedule. But to go back to the, the, the library component, as um, Randy mentioned, the ANC has actually, in the past, when we actually did that survey, made attempts to engage with the library it was not very successful. I do remember that we had a meeting here where library people were invited and there was some conversation about that. Um, it seems to me, schedule-wise, that they are somewhat of a stakeholder. If you want really valuable comments from them, that's going to inform this concept that's going to be coming out in late December. February. You don't want those conversations to happen like right now. And you want those conversations to happen in time. And if there's anything that potentially could disrupt the concept or the schedule, that, that is known. So I guess my question is, what is the thought right now or what is the attitude towards getting this engagement with the library 
and getting that information that is going to help us here. So we, we have, I have actually been in touch with, um, her, her name escapes me, I think it may be Ms. Fuller, I Kim Fuller, um, I, mean, the, uh, I, I may have got her name wrong, but we, we've talked about this quite a bit. Uh, I think she is the, like the director of their construction division. Um, but I want to follow up her tomorrow, with the staff up there tomorrow, uh, to make sure that, as you said, we, we want them to be a, an engaged stakeholder, and, because this is going to impact their life as much as everybody. And we'd like to have their input. Um, especially, I think they can be a really valuable input too on the design. Um, so that's, that's, that's been made pretty clear tonight. So that's a priority coming from this meeting too. Make sure we're, we're in lockstep with, with the library before. Yeah, and just, um, we've done work with the library before, including a, a small refresh. Yeah. So, what's really going to engage? Oh, so you already are aware of the people that's not <coughs> So you're already aware of who the folks are to communicate with. Okay. So it wouldn't be people in that branch, it would be sure. Hey, hey, yes. Okay. So yeah, Kim Fuller has this branch. Okay, so I guess so the, 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 the library program is something that you're aware of. Yes. And you get the information to the environment here. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Anybody else? meeting in uh, December. I know it's tentative, but uh, are you going to set a, sorry, go ahead and pick a date? Well, so maybe I can just get you on the phone and we can work something out. So we're talking the middle of December for the next meeting, is that it? Yes, that's that's our goal. Um, and I will follow up with you, um, I can follow up with you tomorrow, Chris, to, to try to nail down a specific date. Um, I just want to make sure all the, everybody's calendars are aligned for, for a meeting. Okay. Um, we were just a little bit, it's a little bit up in the air trying to, we want to make sure we come back with some sub substantial information that's, that's, um, that really sort of helps advance the, the process. I think we're, 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 we're waiting on to get all this information back, so we just want to come back with something substantial. So, um, I think the symbol is the, the date we were shooting for. I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Okay, you mentioned that there's a uh, Monday the 9th, is there an ANC meeting? Is that the full ANC?